did want to give you guys an update on Adam. Does anybody remember Adam? <clears throat> he went to a prison. I don't remember the last time I spoke about him, but he went to prison. He's in Columbus. He's got like two more years left now. Um, but he's still doing really good. He's reading and he's saying how much he like. He's thankful for God putting him in place, really, so that he can gather his thoughts and everything. And he called me. He's calling me more often now. I guess he has more freedom. He has a lot more freedoms where he is now than when he was in Cincinnati. When you're in the prison, you have more freedom. We can email back to each other. Um, he can call me like any time. He called me three times yesterday. He called me late last night. It was like 11 o'clock. I was laying down getting in bed. And he's calling me. He's, but he was trying to see if I wanted to do a Bible study today. So we're doing a Bible study over the phone uh, at 5 o'clock today. Which we only get like 15 or 20 minutes every time we talk. Because we'll cut it off. But uh, he can, I guess they get in line, he'll get back in line, and then he'll call me again. And then about 15 minutes, he'll go back in the line, wait for the other guys, then call me. So, we can only do 15 minutes at a time, I guess there's no limit to how many times he can call me. So, but yeah, so today we'll be doing a Bible study. He's got lots of questions, of course, which is great. That means he's reading, he's very knowledgeable. He's, very knowledgeable. He memorizes things. He's he's really smart, so uh, I can see him going very far. <laughs> okay, Jake, let me may I say something? Yes. Let me elaborate a little bit on Adam and that situation <coughs> that you all may or may not know about. I own a roofing company, which is not typically the easiest place to be a Christian when you're out with construction work. <coughs> So me and Jake, we have our work cut out for us, and I even was a little fearful of bringing my children into the business, you know, just because I just know it's a rough road. It, I mean, I've gone through my uh, pitfalls of, you know, not being the best uh, example as a Christian. You know, when I first started my company, I uh, I, I thought, you know, I, I was really, I was really dedicated Christian at that time, and. Uh, Slowly, instead of me pulling everybody toward Christianity, they pulled me more toward them. So I had some dark periods that I, I've worked my way through. But anyway, Adam, um, I don't know if Jacob has shared, but Adam was in the, uh, in the in the stronghold of Satan and, and the fact that he was addicted to heroin. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the great, the great part of, of that whole situation is I personally don't think that, uh, you know, Jacob, I would send Jacob out to work with this young man. And now Jacob had another fellow there named Tim. Tim's a Christian, too. So it was two Christians and then Adam. So I felt a little bit better about the fact that we had numbers on him, you know. And uh, But Adam, he didn't treat Jacob all that great, I didn't think. I mean, you know, he talked down to him a little bit. And I don't think he ever really spoke uh, in a really... Uh, uplifting way to Jacob and Adam was going through some difficult times in his life and he was uh, entrenched in uh, in uh, drug abuse through a, through a drug that most people do not find their way back from. Most people once addicted to heroin it's very difficult to uh, to bounce back. To take the fact that when you when you consider the fact that he talked in a he talked in what I believe a derogatory manner toward Jacob, but Jacob was still there for him every day. And uh, when most people wouldn't have not gave this guy the time of day, you know, Jake did, and he <clears throat> and he hung in there, and. Uh, it's just a great example of how we should be as, as Christians, you know? Because we, you know, it's easy. It's just like in business. I tell, I tell my uh, employees, every once in a while we'll get a rotten customer. They're out there, believe it or not. And, uh, you know, there's rotten contractors too, you know? We happen to, we think we're not one of those. We think we're a good contracting company, but they're rotten customers. And, uh, my employees or maybe one of the girls in the office will answer the phones and have a difficult time. And I always tell them, I say, it's, you know, it's easy to please the nice people. 
I mean, there's no challenge there. Our challenge as a company is to please the, the rotten people. Because that's what you have to do if you're going to be successful. Well, Christianity is a little bit like that. It's easy to be nice to people that want God. It's easy to be nice to people that are being nice back to you. But you take, you know, people like, like Adam, who... I believe that his eternal destiny was changed. Amen. It wasn't changed by my son, it was changed by God. Amen. But God used my son. That's right. And my son was humble enough to allow that to happen. Mm-hmm. This young man's in prison and Jacob shares with me, he's happy. He's happy. He realizes how close he was to spending eternity in hell. How 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 much if this all hadn't happened, he, <clears throat> uh, well now you all clearly know where Jacob gets his emotion, right? <laughs> his emotions. Um, but this young man, you know, I believe he's saved. I don't know that. I'm not God. None of us know. I mean, but judging by the fruit that he's Attempting to bear, um, uh, based upon the, his his hunger for the word, uh, one would uh, think that he is saved, or at least he is definitely on uh, the track to become to be saved. And 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 I'm just so proud. You know, I know pride is not always a good thing, but pride in the right things I think can, can be okay. And I'm I'm very proud of Jacob for that. Amen. I was not always. Uh, best example for that. If somebody talked mean to me, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I was a shovel my side. You know what I mean? I didn't have that temperament that Jacob does. But my wife and I have tried hard to bring our children up in a way that, you know, would produce that type of person. And, and we obviously have succeeded in that. Amen. Except for with Josh. We don't know what happened with, with him. <laughs> but I mean, I just wanted to bring some clarification. That was not, that whole, so that's a really beautiful story with Adam. <clears throat> and and it, you know, it starts with Jacob humbling himself day after day, and then he got tossed in prison, and a whole bunch of bad stuff happened, and Jacob kept going down there, and that, nobody in my office said a thing about Adam after that happened, because everybody else that what, what, norm, what normally people do, they all he went to jail, he's a drug addict, and they forgot about him. And Jacob didn't, and Jacob has been down there many times, and uh, taking time out of his schedule to preach to him and talk to him, and uh, if we would all just, you know, I guess the moral of this story, if we can take something out of that, and the next time somebody just seems worthless to us, or or not, like they're not worthy of our time, if we can remember this situation as an example. Of, Amen. Uh, that would be, thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. He'll be coming down here too when he gets out. Hey, we, yeah. We're going to go visit him in a couple of weeks. You know, and then I might get a card or something that everybody can sign or something. Mm-hmm. He probably really liked that a lot. I went down last week and got him a Bible from the Christian <coughs> store with his, you know, how they do the name on it and they put it on there. So he's got a Bible with his name on it now. You know, our Sunday school lesson said this morning nothing is impossible with God. Right. And you was in the right spot, and God used you in the right way. And I think the biggest reason that he was the way he was towards me is because of the way I act. Because his attitude was anti-Christian. I don't want to have any part of that. And he verbally expressed that. He did, he, he did not want to have anything to do with Christianity or Christians or anything like that. So I believe that's part of the reason why he acted the way he did towards me. But he's not like that anymore. And Dwayne used what God said. Send him out to him too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was two guys before. Send him out to him too. Yeah. We were both always. It's not like we hold him down and say, this is how it is, this is this. It was just the way we lived. But, but it says, send him out to him. And I forgot during the prayer request, one of the two guys that we're referring to, that one that worked, Jacob worked with, his name's Tim Hall, and uh, he fell yesterday. He just fell a short distance, but he really injured himself. He's actually in the hospital today. And uh, 
if uh, we could, if you guys could pray for Tim Hall. He's just recovering. He he cracked his vertebrae in a couple oh. spots, and then he uh, got a big cut in his head and knocked himself unconscious for a couple of minutes. And he only fell, I think, about six or seven feet. But it's that's all it takes. Yeah. I so I was there with him last night for like three hours. He's doing pretty good. He said his vision was getting a little messed up. Sorry. But that's his he's on a lot of painkiller and stuff like that, so I'm sure that can probably contribute to that. But he was doing all right. He said he's gonna go home tonight or today sometime. Okay, let's get into the study. Uh, <coughs> Last week, we talked about uh, making the decision. We're in a series right now of a relationship with God. Amen. I'm adding another week to the series. Um, this week, we're going to talk about the Bible. Next week, we'll talk about studying the Bible. So I'm breaking that up into two. But last week, we talked about making the decision. If we want that relationship with God... We have to make that decision consciously ourselves, and we have to stick with it. And one of the th- one of the two things we said was the necessity is getting into the Word, getting into the Bible. So I want to look at some different scriptures in the Bible and why we should read the Bible and why we should study the Bible. The Bible. <coughs> is the ultimate best-selling book of all time. It's estimated from 2.5 billion to 6 million copies sold. The next book that's in line before that is only at 500 million. So it's way beyond exceeding above any other book in how much it's been sold. So a book that's been that much popular, that is that popular, must be something important. And then many of the stories, <clears throat> and this can be a whole new study itself, many of the stories in the Bible have been proven archaeologically. Many of them have. You had Jesus, the ark, uh, David's temple, the crossing of the Red Sea. They found archaeological evidence of all of these things that prove things all the way back to the, the but all the way back to Genesis. Amen. To prove that the Bible isn't just, as some people say, a storybook. That's right. There's actual proof that many of those stories happened. <clears throat> Through the Bible, we can gain wisdom. In Proverbs 9 10, I'm sure everybody knows this scripture. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. I've uh, sought God out for wisdom ever since I was young. That's just something that's really intrigued me. And I just got done, uh, I got one more, I got Proverbs 31. I just took this week and I read, read Proverbs. And it's, it's a really good book. You just kind of want to write down notes on the whole thing. You pretty much write down the whole book because the whole thing is noteworthy. And once we get done with this series, I would like to go into, that's one of the things I'd like to go into next is studying wisdom a little bit and what uh, what the Bible says about it. <clears throat> so like I said I've sought him out for wisdom. I've I've desired that wisdom and asked him that since I was young. I don't even know how many times I've just read Proverbs over and over again before. But that's something we should be seeking is that wisdom. And we can gain that, not just from Proverbs, but from the whole Bible. Who is seeking wisdom? We should, we should all be seeking wisdom. That's why I want to study that, to hear what it is, what he's telling us, that that is foundational. Through reading the Bible, that is how, what did we say last week? That is how he speaks to us. Amen. That is how we are led. It's like our roadmap. It's like our instruction yeah. manual. What? Basic instruction before leaving earth. It is. That is how he speaks to us. In Psalms 119, 105, <clears throat> said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. His word, that is the Bible. This is his word. That's how he speaks to us now. If we want to be led by him, if we want to hear what he's telling us, 
we have to get into the Word. In 2 Timothy 2.15, 2 Timothy 2.15, and I'm, I'm not going to take a whole long time on this because I don't know how long my voice is going to hold up. But uh, why we should study the Bible. In 2 Timothy 2.15 it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Mm -hmm. So why should we study it? We want to be approved unto God. Mm -hmm. We want to go before him and him to say, well done. We want him to say, well done to us. We don't want him, we want to be approved by him. And that goes back to those, you know, when we gain our crown, we want to have something to throw before him. We have to study our Bible to know what he wants us to do. <clears throat> In John 17, 17, it says, Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. If we're seeking for truth, this is where we're going to find it. This is where we're going to find the truth. This is the truth. His word, the Bible. In Luke eleven twenty eight, it says, But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. We're not just supposed to get up every morning and read a chapter of the Bible. We are supposed to do that, but we're supposed to get into it more, study it, memorize Scripture. In my prayer closet, there's one little thing I've added on. I have my little memory verse section. So every time I go in there, I do my prayer, but I'll also read that memory verse that's up there, trying to Memorize the scripture, what he wants me to take in. <clears throat> so it says, hear the, uh, hear the word of God and keep it. We need to keep it within ourselves. We need to memorize it. We need to study it so we can know it. In Ephesians 6, 17, it says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Those words. This is the sword. This is the sword. Without, without this, I, I would hate to go into a battle or anything without my weapon. You, know, you go with just, with just nothing. You don't have your weapon. If we're not in the word, if we're not studying and keeping it within us, we're going into the battle without anything. What did we, uh, a few weeks ago, and it's been a, it's been a little while now, but in Matthew, I believe it's chapter 5, when the devil is tempting Jesus, he is quoting scripture. The devil is quoting scripture. And Jesus goes right back at him and quotes scripture back to him. But if we don't know the scripture, you know who does know the scripture? The devil knows the scripture. And he can confuse us and make us think one thing and the other thing. And if we don't know the scripture... We're going into the battle defenseless. We have, we have nothing to fight him with. That's what we need. That's who's in this Bible, Jesus. We have to have Jesus in this book for us. We have to know the scripture. That's our weapon. In 1 Peter 2.2, 2, it says, As newborn babes desire the sincere mouth of the word, that ye may grow thereby. It gives you, it gives us a sense of comfort, a sense of peace to read his scripture, to hear what he's saying to us, to hear his promises, to hear what he has for us, his plans for our lives. Think about like uh, when we first get saved, we're just hungry for it, like Adam is right now. He's only been saved for a couple months, a few months maybe, and he's just hungry for the word. He wants to know, he wants to understand. And then, uh, and well, think about Benjamin when he has the bottle. Everybody in here has seen it when you make the bottle and you go up to him and he's like, yes. he just wants it. He just wants it. You reach for it and reach for it. You can keep it right there and keep reaching for it until you give it to him. But we're the same way. We need it. We need that word. We need the word of God. In Isaiah 55, Verse 10 and 11. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, 
but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. He's trying to tell us something, and he doesn't want it to return unto him void. He has something in our lives, each and every one of us. We're part of the body. We're part of the body, and he has a plan for our lives. I think I mentioned this that last week, how we've been reading through our studies. We've uh, encountered these scriptures I'm about to read, a couple of them, but how things in the Bible are written for us. And the Bible tells us that, that the stories, the events that happen were written for our benefit, for written for our example, for us to learn from. <clears throat> in Romans 4, chapter, or chapter 4, verse 19 through 25, it says, Romans 4, 19 through 25, and being not, it's talking about Abraham, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. This is when Jesus was there, ate with them, told them that they were going to have a child. Verse 20, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone, that was imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Why did he record the stories that he recorded in the Bible? It says right here, this wasn't written just for him. This was written for us. In 1 Corinthians, another one, chapter 10, starting in verse 1. It says, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples. To the intent, we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, and for some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye also, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. That's that story of Israel coming out of Egypt. <clears throat> Everything that happened to them was recorded for us. To see in history how it's repeated. To see that the mistakes that they make so that we don't make them. The last one in 1 Peter 2.21, it says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps. We're supposed to follow in the steps of Jesus. Right. We're supposed to Amen. strive. That's why we're called Christians. Christians were Christ-like, basically. We're supposed to follow Christ. <coughs> Everything that was written was written for a reason. This whole Bible was written for a reason, for our example, for our learning. In 2 Timothy 3.16 and 17, 2 Timothy 3.16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It, this God's word is, tot is totally sufficient for everything that we need. Right there in the end of that, verse 17, it says, 
that may be perfect, thoroughly finished unto all good works. That's why he wrote this. That's why it's there for us, for us to learn from. He put it all there for us. He's given us all the lessons. Are we willing to look in, to seek it, to, tr to, to study, to find what he's trying to stop, tell us? As 1 Peter 2, 2 said, newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. In Isaiah 28, 9, it says, When shall ye teach knowledge? And whom shall ye make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. When we first start working towards a relationship with God, Amen. whether it's when we first get saved or whether it's we've been saved for a while but we made that decision, like we talked about last week, that we're going to work towards a relationship with God. We are basically babes at that time, and we just need to take in the Word as much as we can get in. <clears throat> there is so much in the Scriptures, more than you'll ever understand. It's, it's too much for us to handle. He'll reveal a little bit here, a little bit there, but it's not all going to come at once. But uh, as you do mature, as you do get weaned from the milk, he's going to reveal more to you, more in doctrine, more in knowledge. He's going to reveal more to you as your understanding and as your relationship with him becomes stronger. <sighs> Next week, we'll talk about studying the Scriptures. We know how important the Scriptures are for our lives, how important it is to read it, how Amen. important it is not to just read it, but to study it, to dig into it. So we want to be approved of God. We want Him to be pleased with us. We, right now, we're babes. We're babes right now. We need to keep getting the milk. Keep getting the milk of the Word. Just keep reading every day. Keep reading every day as much as we can. And then we're gonna. We need. To, we're gonna start studying. We need to not just studying what we have here, not what our Sunday school is, not what we talk about here on Sunday morning, but whatever God put you on your heart. Maybe He's having you study something for something that's going to be coming up in your life. We need to be able to study on our own. And that really, when we, when, to, in order for that relationship with God, we need to Him to speak to us directly. If you haven't <clears throat> made the decision like we talked about last week, I would Amen. urge to make that decision. Amen. To make that decision to come to that oneness with God and that relationship with Him, because it makes a world of a difference when you're not in a constant relationship with him. When it be when you feel distant from him, it's not it's not a good feeling. I it, and it happens to everybody. If if you make the decision right now, later on in life something's gonna happen and you're gonna and you're gonna start to slip away a little bit. And it, you'll feel that separation a little bit and you'll want to get back in that relationship with him. A relationship requires constant work. It has to have work, just like a marriage, just like a uh, father and son, father and daughter. It requires work, or that relationship will die away and fade away. So if you haven't made the decision, make the decision with us here. Make the decision now to have that relationship with him. So. Dear Lord, <clears throat> Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for uh, your son that died on the cross and shed his blood for us, Lord. Thank you for the, uh, the hope of salvation, the hope of spending eternity with you that we have only through your son. Pray, Lord, for anybody who needs to make that decision either to bring their life to you, Lord, to accept you into their hearts or who is making the decision now that they are going to get back into a relationship with you, Lord. That you just put conviction upon all of the heart, all of our hearts here, Lord. And that you help us to make that decision, Lord. And continue to help us to stay in that relationship with you, Lord, and to understand what your will is in our lives. Pray that you be with us through this week. That you bless each and every one of us and anybody that was not here today that could not make it. Pray that you be with them and guide them this week. 
And anybody who is uh, out that is sick this week, pray that you uh, be with them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.